Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, I hope you can uh, hear my voice. I hope you can uh, see my uh, screen here to uh, to today. And uh, we'll just uh, if you can just uh, let me know if you can just ping that you can see it. That'll be a good start for us. And uh, we'll uh, we'll look to um, we'll look to begin. Super. That's great. I appreciate that. Thank you very, uh, thank you very much. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good uh, afternoon. It's Paul here. We here we are, third of September, two thousand eighteen, for uh, the the sixth session now in the uh, Admiral Markets webinar series on mastering the four M's of trading, a uh, a, a long and running uh, series about uh, you know how we can develop as traders, of which we will go into more detail in the next few moments. But as always, we will just begin with a quick risk discussion. Disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 83% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading CFDs with Admiral Markets. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. Please ensure you fully understand all risks involved. Forex and CFD trading is a risky activity and this presentation and accompanying video should not be taken as advice for investing as they only represent the personal opinion of the authors. This presentation and accompanying video is for information and educational purposes only. Online educational materials are developed by Admiral Markets and distributed by Admiral Markets UK Limited for a global audience. So please, therefore, take into consideration that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. As of August, as of August 2018, regulation within the European Union differs for retail clients and professional clients. In our presentation, we use demo trading accounts where all clients can still use a high leverage in a risk free environment. Before opening a live trading account, please consider the differences between retail and professional terms. Retail clients benefit from unlimited negative balance protection. Professional clients at Admiral Markets UK receive a compensation of account deficits with the maximum payment of £50,000 sterling as per our negative balance protection policy. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, here we are with uh, Admiral Markets and you talk quickly about, you know, why we operate with uh, Admiral Markets, one of the uh, the leading brokers uh, uh, in uh, in the world. Well, you know, they have a, a range of uh, fantastic uh, products and services and instruments that uh, they provide to, uh, to clients. And invariably, one of the most popular ones is the, the DAX 30, where they offer a, an excellent spread of 0.8 points during the main trading hours. Uh, what you will also find, though, is that they offer uh, clients the uh, access to the MetaTrader Supreme Edition, which is available in both the uh, MT4 and MT5 flavors. If you have uh, any particular questions uh, regarding uh, Admiral Markets or regarding the uh, Supreme Edition of MetaTrader, then be sure to get in touch with your account representative and they will be very happy to uh, talk you through the uh, opportunities. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know me, it's uh, my name's uh, Paul Wallace. I'm, uh, you know, I've been a trader for uh, for a good few years now, and uh, what I talk about is that primarily I describe myself as a discretionary based method trader. I'm primarily looking to be a yeah, dominant trend swing trader, which we will come on to more as we uh, go through these sessions. I'm really big on simplicity in your uh, trading. Human beings, we tend to overcomplicate things. What I look to do is I uh, look to meld fundamentals, technical sentiment, and geopolitics to give me a uh, an overall view and within that I have a, a rules-based framework that I use for my uh, 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 trading decisions. Primarily, I will trade FX indices and commodities, but I will also uh, uh, look and uh, operate in things like uh, equities and uh, uh, crypto. Um, I uh, My own philosophy, really, especially within FX markets, is I just want to be buying strength, selling weakness. So I'm always looking to try and work out, you know, where's the strength and where's the weakness and pair that off and find a trade in there. I uh, particularly like to use pullbacks for entries. We're going to talk about that in specific today. We're going to sort of have a little bit of a, an intro to that. Um, I'm primarily looking to uh, use the weekly chart. 
starts using something called the stam strength turn and momentum to build a picture and then i like to look and execute and manage on daily and four hour charts using just very simple price action techniques uh, for my intraday trading okay which you know probably only makes up somewhere between about you know 10 to 15 percent of my work well then i'm i'm primarily a uh, a mean reversion trader pretty much the uh, operate in the opposite way that uh, that i do with my uh, dominant trend swing trading and you know as we go through these sessions over the uh, next coming weeks and months, then uh, hopefully you'll start to, uh, to understand and learn all about those. So, uh, as always, I like to set some expectations for our sessions. It's my job here to educate you about the four M's of trading and the uh, you be in a position where, you know, you're able to go away and begin to analyze any market and then be ready to trade it. And as we uh, continue the conversation, as we develop our experience and knowledge, well, then, you know, we're uh, hopefully that I'm going to be raising your self-awareness about managing risk and also about managing yourself. Uh, for yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what I talk about is that, you know, we have a time limitation here of about, you know, 45 minutes every uh, every Monday. I, I appreciate that within the room, there is a broad range of experience from complete beginners to experienced traders. So within that, you know, I, I uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit limited in terms of the breadth and depth that I can go into in one particular session but uh, you know by all means if you have additional questions or if you're watching this on demand don't be uh, afraid to get in touch with your account representative and they'll be happy to to talk you through some of the uh, the ideas that we've discussed and so you know with those kind of limitations upon me you know what I like to try and do is focus on the tools that you can use tomorrow I can talk about the academics you know until the, until the cows come home as, as they say in Ireland but the reality is it's about you know focusing on tools that you can use tomorrow in your uh, own trading to help you uh, develop and then master the, the four M's of trading. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are joining us for the very first session, you know, or you're watching this uh, on demand, what I talk about in terms of the four M's of trading is uh, kind of uh, four areas that I think all good traders need to be uh, aware of, they need to be educated upon, they need to be able to manage, and they need to be able to master them. Those four M's of trading are effectively markets, method, money, and myself. Uh, and the reason I take such an interest, okay, the reason I sort of uh, talk about how, why it's so important is because I've learned over the years, both with myself and with helping and assisting other traders, you know, traders who are from complete beginners to, to traders with, you know, two decades of experience, is that it's actually, you know, when a trader is, you know, in alignment and in managing those markets, method, money and myself, that they're in a position to actually trade at their best. And, you know, alternatively, if you're having a challenge or two in your own trading, well, then, you know, I can bet your life that one of the uh, the challenges you probably have is in one of those four areas. And about the, you know, the the uh, the sooner you're able to identify it and then address it, the, the swifter your uh, progress will be. And that's what we're going to be talking about during all of these sessions is I'm going to be going through all four of those uh, four M's. OK, you know, we're just building on it, you know, week by week, slot by slot, so that I'm hoping to not only educate you, but also help you raise your self-awareness, but also develop develop your ability to understand and master those four M's of, uh, of trading. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, what I'm trying to do is, you know, the first sort of uh, four or five week sessions, you know, I you know, went through quite a lot of uh, elements of the detail. And what I just want now is to be able to, as I say, week by week, build, you know, piece by piece by piece, slowly but surely, giving you the uh, the introduction and the insight into, you know, what you need to be doing to, to master those four M's of trading. The last few weeks, you know, we've uh, specifically looked at, you know, markets, okay, in terms of understanding our markets, understanding what that actually means. If you, uh, you know, if you want to know more about those four M's in particular, depth well then you know what i suggest is that you know the the first um, the first video back there in sort of the end of july and that will be on demand it'll be on the uh, youtube channel okay the admiral market youtube channel by all means watch it where i go into all four of those m's in a, a little bit more detail but you know what we've talked about is mostly markets and we're going to by the end of this session have started to nudge our way towards method as well which is what we'll be doing for the uh, for the next few weeks but what we talked about is you know uh, you know in terms of you know having a, a routine and a process having trading habits which feeds into that four m's okay of the that final m of managing myself and you know, what i talk about is you know regardless of what type of trader you are right regardless of whether you are you know a weekly trader on the aussie yen or you're an intraday trader on dax 
or you're a swing trader on you know uh, bitcoin right regardless of what uh, of what your uh, let's say your uh, uh, execution time frame and execution plan is when you open a chart what you need to be doing is effectively you know just following some very simple steps that you can do you know time after time after time regardless of what your uh, instrument is and we talked about it one step one always define your levels of support resistance step two define if there's a trend step three wait for price to react at key support and resistance levels look for step four and you know for certain price action signals at those support and resistance levels uh, and then step five is a case of you know is that actually part of a bigger chart pattern it's about just having you know almost you know a a, a, a as i said a, you know like a, a simple routine a simple routine that you're able to follow you know, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. Okay, it's about being consistent. It's about just, uh, you know, just being able to sort of uh, have those routines that allows you to be, you know, consistent and disciplined. That those are things that help traders deliver really well. So, you know, that's what we're just trying to do here. Okay, we're just trying to, to sort of uh, build that for you. Okay, and you know, and, and as I said, it doesn't matter whether you've been trading for two weeks or two decades. These are the sort of routines and good habits that we uh, we all need as traders. So, uh, you know, if you remember, you know, talked about step one is about defining levels of support and resistance. And then that, what that actually meant was that, you know, when you open a chart, you need to be looking at the monthly, the weekly and the daily charts and drawing in, you know, horizontal levels of support and resistance, which we, you know, we talked about, you know, you can use uh, fractals to, to, to help you. We also talked about um, adding in uh, useful and specific psychological round numbers. So, uh, you know, so for example, pound dollar is knocking about 130 at the moment. The dollar index is knocking about 95. Gold was knocking around about 1200. Okay, uh, oil was around about knocking around 70. So, you know, well, you know, when you see big psychological round numbers, it's it's important to make sure you are aware of them as well. And that really, as I said, it should be, you know, just um, completely. Uh, almost like routine, almost like automatic, almost at a point of automatic. When you see it, that's what you do. Okay, you just you know open your chart, draw on those levels, you know monthly, weekly, daily charts, so you can start to build a picture about that particular market. In particular, what we're looking for is we're looking to see, you know, is there a trend? All right. What we're going to be focusing on for this first part, you know, where I'm just setting up the, let's say, kind of like the, the basics is is about, you know, looking to define a trend and to be uh, and able to sort of trend in line with the dominant trends. And, you know, what I need to see from uh, trend traders is that, you know, you can identify whether that instrument is trending or consolidating. Okay, is it trending or consolidating? You know, it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be, you know, um, doesn't need to be too esoteric or too advanced. The right, uh, as I said, you know, right back there at the start, you know, I'm I'm a big fan on keeping it simple. But what I need to know is that you're in a position to be able to identify when a market is, you know, consolidating here, like this DAX weekly chart where we can see at the start of it on the bottom left, you know, the price is just going sideways, price is consolidating. But then once we have a breakout, which we'll touch upon later, then, you know, we can see that that market was in a nice uptrend. We can see that the uh, fractals helped us define, you know, when the market was in a consolidation. And also it was, you know, the fractals were helping identify those higher highs, higher lows to just confirm that, you know, we were in a nice uptrend. And that's that's all well and good. You know, and I need you to be able to do that. OK, it might sound quite simplistic, but very often people forget this or people sort of overcomplicate it. I say every week, you know, I sort of just uh, I'm saying this to remind you all to sort of let it slide into your uh, into your brains by osmosis. So it stays is that, you know, good trends will leap off the page at you. OK, good trends will, you know, they will leap off the page at you. You know, if you're if you're looking at a chart and you're not really sure if there is a trend there, well, then the likelihood is it probably isn't good trends leap off the chart. They will they will show themselves to you. So uh, one of the other things we talked about, OK, I think it was maybe two weeks or so ago was, you know, uh, helping you define the trends. Sometimes you can use moving averages. What you'll see on my charts is uh, a blue 20 period moving average, a red 50 period moving average. 
and a green 200 period moving average all right the the faster the you know the the sort of the, the lower the number the faster the moving average so the 20 period moving average you know is is the one that sort of changes the uh, the most rapidly and uh, you know with that that is the one that's close to the price whereas the 200 period moving average okay is you know it's a sort of a it's a longer moving average it's a slower moving average but what it also means is that you know it's it's you know when it comes into play it actually has a uh, has a, has a real strength to it and, and we will we will look more of that as we go uh, as we go through so we talked about moving averages in the case of not really being interested in them for moving average crossovers which is what uh, a lot of new traders use but actually what we want to do is just give us an indication that there's you know definitely the uh, there's a there's a trend there and also try and identify where you know we get ideas of uh, specific levels of dynamic support and resistance that may help us gauge the the sort of strength and the momentum of that particular trend what we talked about is you know identifying our trends okay you know identifying you know what what sort of environment that market was in and you know and keeping it as simple as possible when markets are bullish we want to be a buyer when markets are bearish you want to be a seller Define the trend and trade with it. No trend, no trade, no signal, no trade. And I know that, you know, every week I have a couple of these just slides just there to remind you. It's because I want it to become almost automatic to you. I want it to become almost, you know, just, you know, your natural sort of state of being. Because, I, you know, I truly believe, as Van Tharp says, is that, you know, we, we don't necessarily trade markets. We trade our beliefs about markets. And if we always have a, a nice instilled belief that when markets are bullish, you want to be a buyer. And when markets are bearish, you want to be a seller. And that will help you over the uh, the sort of the, the long distance of your trading career. And that's what uh, that's what I'm working for. So, you know, where we talked about, you know, defining levels of support resistance in step two, defining a trend uh, and then step three, you know, looking at waiting for price to react at key support and resistance levels. What does that uh, what does that actually mean? Well, you know, what it means is I'm, I'm looking for a confluence of events to happen at key levels. I'm looking for several things to come together at one particular point that's what i'm looking for confluence of events all right two or two to four things to come together at a particular key level and that's when that happens that's when i'm actually looking to sort of uh, to sort of to trade that's what i'm looking to use that as my point upon which i start to execute my trade plan and we're going to build trade plans as we go over the uh, the next few uh, weeks and months slowly but surely just giving the opportunity to to build yourself a, a solid trade plan So there was a saying, step three, waiting for um, price to react at those key support and resistance levels, which couldn't be bing round numbers. They could be moving averages where it's dynamic support and resistance. There can be the horizontal support and resistance levels that we've drew in from step one. And then what we're looking for is, you know, at those when price is at those particular areas is that we're looking for price action signals at those particular levels. And that is what we're going to start to edge our way towards over the uh, over the next few sessions in terms of understanding what am I going to do? What do I actually do when I'm at, you know, when price is actually at those uh, those confluence of events areas? So, you know, I've talked about this again, time and time and time again, you know, there is there is no perfection. All right. There is no perfection. You know, we are you know primarily using technicals for our uh, for our entry points. But, you know, what we're really looking at is it's just about building ourselves a very simple uh, decision making framework that allows us to make one of three choices whenever we look at a chart. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to sit on my hands? That that is as simple as it is. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Am I going to sit on my hands? We, you know, as I say every time, uh, you know, we, we very often overcomplicate things, and and I do myself, okay, I do myself, and so by having you know simple routines, simple framework, what it allows me to do is to sort of stop myself getting bogged down and trying to overcomplicate things. It's about making it nice and simple to be able to make my decision. And that's what we're going to be talking about, you know, as the kind of, let's say, the the, the wraparound for all of these mastering forums of trading is about helping you sort of, you know, give you the, um, the, the, the basics of a simple, robust, objective, consistent way to make one of those three decisions, to have your own decision making framework. That's where I want you to be. 
So if you remember uh, last week, what we talked about is you know, we're going to, you know, in terms of the market section, we're going to start to look at focusing on, you know, what we need to be, uh, you know, what we need to be uh, engaged in. OK, we talked about, you know, uh, you know, just wanted to have a look at the uh, 28 major FX pairs as well as the dollar index. We're going to do a little bit of work on the sort of the dollar index today. But, you know, we talked about having those sort of major cross currency pairs okay that that involve the sort of the the, the major so we're looking at you know uh, us dollar we're looking at sterling we're looking at uh, uh, euro we're looking at swiss franc we're looking at japanese yen we're looking at the uh, com dolls of uh, australian dollar kiwi dollar and canadian dollar uh, and when you actually sort of you know uh, cross relate them that that gives us 28 major pairs that are there for our trading so there's there's plenty of uh, there is plenty of opportunity there within the fx markets i know some of you will trade you know maybe Maybe some of the more uh, exotic pairs, and that's absolutely that's absolutely you know that's absolutely fine. You know what we're uh, what you know what I talk about is that everything that I share with uh, people here is it's all about being you know time frame and instrument agnostic. It should be you know you'd be able to to look at anything you know uh, you know any instrument on any time frame to be able to sort of make um, good trading decisions, and that's um, that's realistically you know where I uh, where I want you to um, to be. Uh, we also talked about, you know, adding into uh, instruments we look at in terms of indices. You know, we're looking at, you know, the bigger ma major American ones like the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the FTSE, the DAX, and the you know, Japanese Nikkei. We could also probably add a little bit of the, the, the Chinese market there as well, okay, just to give us an indication of, you know, what we're, uh, where our interest would be in the uh, commodity dollar currencies. We'll also have a look at uh, some of the, uh, the the commodities, in particular, you know, oil, gold and silver, also maybe a little bit of copper. And some of you may want to trade the, the, the softs, you know, okay, the soft agri commodities, things like wheat, sugar, soybeans, cotton and cocoa. Um, you know, we have uh, with the Admiral Markets, uh, fantastic uh, you know, opportunities. OK, we, you know, we have uh, most of the, uh, the the FANGs stocks okay, and a, and a wide range of other equities to, to interact and engage and trade with. So in particular, things like the FANGs. Okay, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, your own personal favorites. I think uh, I think last week we looked at Tesla, if I if I recall, which, you know, is provided to trade. But of course, has been in the news a fair bit. So, you know, we're able to add them into our um our, let's call it like our plan, our sort of, uh, you know, our overall trade watch list. Uh, and we also now have the opportunity sort of to, to trade uh, cryptocurrencies using the uh, Admiral Markets uh, MetaTrader 4 and 5 Supreme Edition. So, you know, you can look at things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and uh, Ripple. And, you know, maybe we'll have a little look at them as part of our uh, as part of our sessions, um, you know, uh, today and in the future. So, you know, we, we covered there a lot of the markets and what I want us to start to do is I want us to start, you know, for today and over the next few sessions is start to look at methods. As I said, we've covered a lot on markets and, you know, how they're built and where they come from and what we're looking to do and understand markets. But, you know, invariably at some point we need to, to look at how we're going to take the trade, how we're going to actually, you know, fire off the uh, fire off our uh, positions. And so we're going to nudge our way towards that. And it's just going to be a small introduction to today. So. If you go down, ladies and gentlemen, if you know, if you go on to, to Google, if you go on to the Internet, you know, these uh, these days and, you know, and if you were to, to, you know, to type into the search box looking for lots of, you know, looking for trading and investing uh, methods and ideas. Well, you know, uh, uh, what you would find is that, you know, that there are literally, you know, there are literally thousands and thousands out there. OK, thousands and thousands. Uh, and, you know, you can, you know, you can from free trading methods down through to, uh, you know, ones that cost you know um a good deal of uh, a good deal of money okay but what i want you to realize what i want you to take on board ladies and gentlemen is that i want you to take on board that you know throughout all of those trading and investing methods they, they tend to just break down to one of two particular styles that's important just break down to one or two particular styles and what they are is very often our trading methods, we're break, trading either a break of a line of support resistance or we're trading a bounce off a line of support resistance. As simple as that. Remember my first, uh, you know, one of my first slides is about simplicity is key. And that's what we're looking to do. Most of our trading methods, you know, and there's lots, as I said, there's thousands out there. You're going to be trading either a break of a line of support resistance 
or a bounce off a line of support or resistance. That's that's it. That's as far as it goes. And what we need to do is I, I just want you to understand that. I just want you to be able to recognize that, okay? You know, so that you know you 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 know what type of uh, trading style is suits you. So you know, it's, for example, here's a chart of dollar yen on the 15 minute chart. You know, you know, we can have resistance where it's about understanding, you know, where uh, where market meets uh, resistance and you're being able to sort of draw in those kind of particular levels and uh, areas. You know, and there we are in this particular case, you can see we have uh, support as well. We see the support levels and, and what we can see is that actually over there towards the, the far right is that, you know, we had a breakout. The you know, price consolidated and then it broke out okay of that level of support in this particular case and that's what it is it's just a you know it's a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance and, and this is that this is simply just a break of support and resistance so uh, the other alternative as i said is you know is you're trading a bounce off a level of support resistance this is a you know a bit of an old chart now from the euro dollar on the daily but hopefully you can see you know we're in a very nice downtrend but actually what happens is we see that price consistently bounces off the 50 period moving average remember what we talked about two three weeks ago about how moving averages can be you know great indicators of dynamic support and resistance and that's what we had here okay we can see that you know price actually one two three four you know almost like five times there okay price actually bounced off the 50 period moving average it all you know and also a couple of times where it intersected with the horizontal levels of support and resistance so you know as i said it's just about understanding you know you know are you trading a break of a level of support and resistance or are you trading a bounce off a level of support resistance understanding and knowing that is is key So uh, here's a, here's an example of uh, you know where we've got both. Uh, this is actually the Kiwi dollar against the Japanese yen. It's a weekly chart, and you know, because it's a weekly chart, every candle okay is a you know carries a week. So actually, this chart is covering four four and a half years, and and hopefully you can see that you know for for a good part of that, you know price is bouncing off the uh, resistance and support level so you know for a good few you know for over four years it bounces off the 69 horizontal resistance level and it also bounces off the 58 horizontal support area you know, that price you know for there for about four and a half years is completely consolidated there uh, and then hopefully you can see at the end towards the end okay you know it actually breaks out right price breaks the level of resistance uh, and then it takes itself off into a new trend so you know just trying to you know show you that you know you will you will you know this is a weekly chart but you know this could have been a five minute chart okay it's you know it could be a five minute chart just as much as it could be a, a weekly chart it's about sort of being able to sort of recognize and see that and to be able to understand you know the market environment you're in and also recognizing you know how you uh, how you utilize that to, to trade how you look to trade either a break out of a line of support resistance or you know a, a, a you know a bounce off a level of support and resistance so you know as we nudge our way towards uh, the met you know the, the more of the method side of uh trading at the moment you know uh, people ask me well which is the best pull is it better to trade breakouts or is it better to trade bounces well, uh, to be honest, you know, they both have their pros and cons, all right? Some people prefer breakouts, some people prefer bounces. Uh, uh, personally, all right, personally, I, I prefer bounces uh, as part of a, a pullback in a trend, which is what we're going to take a look at in a moment and, you know, cover with some uh, great detail over the uh, the future sessions. You know, I just like to see, you know, uh, as we saw that euro dollar chart a few uh, few slides back, I want to bounce off, you know, uh, off a, you know, a, a particular level of static or dynamic support and resistance that's given me a pullback in an existing trend. And when that happens, that's when I'm actually happy to, to sort of take my trade. The reason I do it, the reason I choose to prefer to do that is because it's giving me an opportunity to enter at a better price. I'm a trader, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that means that you know I want to um, I want to you know get a good price on whatever I'm buying, selling, so that I can you know uh, you know increase my profit margins. That's the way it goes. But also the other side, which sometimes people forget, is that you know I, I learn if you know I get to know if I'm uh, if I'm wrong far far soon, and that uh, that becomes a uh, key as well. Okay, if you're going to be if you're going to be wrong, you might as well uh, uh, learn as as quickly as possible, so that you can actually 
turn it around and and, and move on to the uh, move on to the next trade So, you know, as we just come towards the end of the slides before I switch across to the charts, you know, remember that, you know, the big picture recap is all about remember to manage those four M's of trading within your own trading experience, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to understand, you know, markets, method, money and myself. Have that as part of your uh, trade plan that, you know, you need to review that on a almost daily, weekly, monthly basis. How, how are you actually doing? You know, how are you uh, basing yourself, you know, against those four M's? OK, markets, method, money and myself. And when you start to look at them, are there any particular areas that are weak for you? Are there any areas that are particularly strong for you? OK, especially when you're beginning, starting out, you're, you know, you are you, you can't be you can't be good at everything. And so it's about, you know, being able to recognize where am I? Where am I at my weakest? OK. And, and starting to look at how you can uh, actually hopefully uh, sort of overcome that adapt and overcome and that's hopefully what we'll be doing in these uh, particular sessions so yeah as I said you know just make sure that you check in with yourself about them check in that you know you're in alignment with them you know because invariably as I said it right at the start when they're all in alignment that is when we tend to uh, uh, trade at our best uh, if they're not that is when we start to have a few challenges with our trading so keeping on top of those forums becomes absolutely key you know, and that's what, uh, you know, I put that up slide up to finish you know, the slides every week is that, you know, these sessions here, OK, and, you know, my uh, my sort of uh, uh, presentations is all about, you know, helping raise your self-awareness about those forums uh, and so that you're in a position to, to make better uh, choices. And when we get better choices, we tend to get better uh, outcomes. So, you know, this is these sessions all about weaving those forums together to, to make sure that you're in the best place possible to to take some uh, to take some good trades going forward so there you go ladies and gentlemen you know, that's just finishing off the uh, slides we'll move across to the charts in a moment you know if you're watching this on demand you're watching this later then you know and you've got questions then by all means uh, feel free to uh, contact your account representative about any of the uh, topics we've discussed either today or in previous sessions you can get hold of them on the uh, the London number of 020-7726-4003 you can email them at hello at admiralmarkets.com you can uh, watch this on the uh, YouTube Admiral Markets okay uh, page or you know even sort of contact them on uh, on uh, uh, Facebook page okay on Admiral Markets Global so uh, I hope you found that useful. I hope it just gives you a little bit of uh, food for thought. It's a little bit of pulling together sort of end of the uh, major market sort of kind of scenario. What we're going to do here is if just bear with me a moment. I'm just going to switch across to the charts and we'll just start to, to uh, do a little bit of uh, you know analysis based upon uh, based upon what we've talked about today in the last few sessions. Uh, and we'll uh, you know we will look at uh, we'll look at um, you know building that as part of our own particular uh, uh, mastering the four realms of trading profile. Okay, so just take a little sip of my water there, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, I'm hoping that you can all still um, hear my voice. I'm hoping that you can all still see my, uh, hoping that you can still all see my. Uh, um, uh, see my screens okay and that you can see the charts what i have here is the uh, admiral markets uh, supreme edition all right and um, so it's a great little tool to to utilize and um, for those of you who uh, join me for uh, tuesday morning 10 o'clock london times where we do the uh, real-time daily trading ideas you know i'm a big proponent of using the uh, mini terminal that comes with the supreme edition i think it's a it's a fabulous tool for uh, helping you with your uh, especially for your intraday trading to be able to sort of set orders and and, and manage them so here we go uh, here we are on uh, the uh, supreme edition all right now uh, remember talked last week a little bit about you know with this is a this is a, just a profile that i have here okay which is on the uh, the four m's of trading there you can hopefully see at the bottom uh, and what i've done is i've added in a a good deal of the uh, of the sort of uh, uh, instruments that we talked about okay that you know that should be in our uh, in our particular uh, uh, watch list so i've got a fair few of them in there what what i've actually got here is uh, you know i've got is I've just set it up so these eight charts here represent the, uh, the the basically the US dollar the major dollar what I've got down here on the bottom right okay 
bottom right is the dollar index okay dollar index in the bottom right and then from top left i have got euro dollar okay i've got pound against dollar aussie against dollar i've got the uh, kiwi against the uh, the kiwi against the dollar there just to move this in down to daily and then from the bottom i have a dollar against swiss franc dollar against the yen a dollar against the cad i've got lots more charts on it but you know that is my what I have that is, is that's my kind of go-to setup on on MetaTrader, and the reason being is that I can, you know, with a very very quick glance, just get you know a, an idea on uh, you know what's going on with the dollar. The, you know, the key is that you know the dollar is uh, it is all powerful, all right. You know, it's uh, you know if you're trading, especially in FX markets, you need to have a, a little bit of a handle on what's going on with the uh, the US dollar. It's it's absolutely uh, key. It's the you know it's the major currency of the uh, of the world, uh, and so by being able to see here, you know, I you know I take a quick snapshot of whether whether the, the dollar is strong, whether the dollar is struggling, whether it's actually, you know, asleep or whether it's actually, you know, uh, moving, you know, moving a great deal. And if I look down at the kind of, um, the, you know, the dollar index here, just bring it up, you know, we can see that, uh, you know, we've had a little bit of an interesting sort of uh, uh, pump and dump. It might also be, might often be said. Um, and, you know, we'll, uh, what I'm talking about is, you know, here we have the dollar index. Hopefully, you know, what I talk about is, you know, when you're starting up, you know, that's what I started said, right, when you open a chart, Chart. Okay, I've just you know just drawing in my uh, levels of support and resistance from a monthly chart. Okay, that's what I've done here on the uh, on the the sort of the monthly dicks. Uh, what I've also uh, um, done is you know I'll just probably be looking at you know here okay in terms of levels as well on the monthly chart. There's quite a few fractals there around about that area. When I go down to the uh, when I go down to the the weekly chart, okay, you know, I'm just once again, as I said, just drawing in levels of support resistance and drawing in significant uh, patterns, which is what one of the the things we're going to look at in a uh, in a few weeks um, time. What we're looking at here is, you know, just very quickly, is the dollar index. Okay, you know, it had uh, let's just get the cursor of dollar index had a uh, you know a, a sort of stellar you know year uh, after about um, after about uh, April. You can actually see for the first few weeks of the year that actually price just sort of you know was consolidating there, wasn't it? It was just basically just going sideways, not really giving us any uh, excitement there at all. Uh, and then you know we had just the uh, the sort of you know as we moved into sort of April, we just had a real sort of big run and, and boom from the uh from the, the the dollar index what we've had is you know we've got up to here okay around about the, that 95 level where uh, what we saw was price bouncing back and forth okay there for a good few weeks we just sort of just trying to understand you know what uh, what on earth was uh, going on uh, you know and then basically you know we've had a we had a little bit of a blow through and people thought oh you know it's the it's the dollar index it's you know it's the dollar strength is you know is is carrying on but you know what we had was we had a little bit of a pump and then we had a little bit of a dump right you know we're back to that kind of 95 level all right that's that 95 zone which is a kind of a significant level a significant zone for us so it's not a surprise to see that prices come back down to, to retest it uh, and also it's you know it's certain particular price actions that are uh, that are particularly uh, that are particularly interesting to us so you know that's you know the dollar index we you know we want uh, we want to have a you know we want us to take a, an idea quick glance on okay you know even though you know we've had a little bit of a, a, a pull back you know the, the 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 sort of the dollar is still strong okay the dollar is still it's just clinging on to to, to 95 and it'll be interesting to see what we do uh, over the next few weeks to identify whether that um whether that continues or whether that kind of runs out of uh, runs out of steam but hopefully you can see that you know we're just literally just you know on the charts drawing in levels of support resistance drawing in significant trend lines or significant patterns just being able to start to build a picture okay of you know where is that where is the strength and uh, where is the weakness even though we've had that pullback you know that dollar is still strong okay it's still it's still strong you know and it's a uh, you know we're gonna look to see how that um how that all comes to, to how that all comes together over the uh, over the next few weeks so you know uh, for, you know as i said i've got the the dollar uh, index there but i also have some of the, uh, the the major pairs against the dollar so if you know we have a little look at the uh, the the euro dollar okay the euro dollar is the uh, is practically you know uh, it's practically you know looks the sort of inverse correlation with uh, the dollar index 
Why is that? The dollar index is a basket of currencies and about two thirds of it, about 57, 58 percent of it is made up from the euro. So not unsurprisingly, the dollar index looks the uh, the, the sort of the opposite of the uh, the euro dollar. So where is uh, euro dollar? We had a little bit of a, a, a pop and a rise up before it fell back. Um, here we have on the euro dollar, it actually it actually fell and then reversed and, and climbed. OK, and we had a we've had a nice climb the last couple of weeks. OK, up to uh, up to, you know, the kind of uh, the uh, the heady prices of, you know, above uh, 117. OK, sort of uh, getting into that kind of price area in that action. Uh, and we'll be interested to see whether it's sort of, you know, like the dollar index falls back, whether this actually does as well. My, my own view is that, you know, I, I would expect us to sort of maybe drop down to uh, let's get the, uh, the cursor on here that would you know i expect us to be dropping down to around about that kind of uh, you know 1600 area okay and i'll be looking to see how we uh, how we react there whether it's an opportunity to, to take a long term trade up to the daily 200 and i'd be saying just to to keep an eye on that at the uh, at the moment ladies uh, at the moment ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> What we have uh, also had is that you know, we've had, you know, the Swiss franc has been very, very strong over the last week or two. I, uh, I talked about it on my uh, real-time daily trading ideas session last Tuesday morning that, you know, we had Swiss franc strength and that, you know, we wanted to be opportunities to sort of, you know, uh, to trade that and to build sort of Swiss longs. And that's, uh, you know, we've actually had, a, you know, a, a hugely, you know, uh, sort of impressive week in the, uh, in the, in the sort of, uh, in that, um, in the dollar uh, Swiss franc. What you can hopefully see there is, you know, after going sideways for a, a couple of months, what we've seen is that, you know, as, as price has been going down there on the dollar against Swiss franc. And what does that mean? Well, if you know you're completely new to trading, well, then, you know, what we're seeing is, you know, a, a, an FX pair is, is actually made up of two trades. You've got the the, the sort of the base and the uh, the nominal currency. And, you know, with the dollar Swiss franc, when when we see it going down like that, that is telling us that the uh, the US dollar is the uh, is the cheap currency uh, and actually the Swiss franc is becoming more expensive so uh, any of you who are thinking of making a, a break out of uh, france and germany to go and uh, to go and buy new houses in uh, switzerland you might want to be doing it sooner rather than later because uh, you know it looks like the, the swiss franc has been uh, has been strengthening and so you know we'll, what we'll do is over the uh, the next couple of weeks is we'll have a look at the uh, the swiss franc and we'll talk about you know what were the trading opportunities for that based upon what we saw the price action doing you know and we uh, have no fear we will uh, we will look to do that and there'll be lots of uh, there'll be lots of great opportunities uh, um, for us there to sort of to take that trade upon so uh, let's have a little look at the uh, uh, Aussie dollar as well okay just a very quick look because you know you can see that hopefully there ladies and gentlemen that has been you know one-way traffic there for uh, for you know a good sort of uh, well in fact pretty much all of 2018 that has been a case of you know when the Aussie dollar is traipsing down that's basically meaning that you know the the uh, Aussie dollar is getting weaker and the US dollar is getting stronger and that's what we're seeing you know and uh, you know and that's what we're seeing is that you know the 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 dollar currencies the dollar currency, so things like the uh, Canadian dollar, Kiwi dollar, Aussie dollar, they have all been weakening against the US dollar, okay, for whether it be due to gold or oil or uh, just uh, just um, particular uh, a change of tack by the uh, by the the players and the other parties. That you know that's what we uh, that's what we see um, uh, happening, and that has played out in terms of the uh, the as I said, the Australian dollar against the US dollar. So you know uh, you can see, as I said, good trends leap off the chart at you, and you know that's a that's a good trend. And so, you know, we don't want to we don't want to fight that. We want to basically be able to see where we can work with that. OK, that's what we're uh, that's what we're looking to uh, that's what we're looking to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's no use trying to be a smart Alec. We just want to find those trends and then look to trade in line with them. And that's what we're going to start to cover uh, next week. We'll start to look at, well, OK, if I've you know, if I've managed to find that um, if I've managed, managed to find where, uh, um, you know, good trends are, well, then I need to know, well, actually, how do I uh, how do I engage in that? How do I actually how do I take that trade and all i'd say is you know uh, have patience that was going to be released to you over the next um the next couple of weeks so uh, i know we've got a few people here who are uh, particularly uh, interested in you know uh, crypto um you know crypto opportunities so why don't we uh, why don't we have a little look at them there here in our uh, portfolio i'm uh, pretty sure i have them uh, Pretty sure I have them uh, here. We'll just probably, I'll probably just shot past them a little bit. So let's just uh, here we go. So you know, uh, um, uh, you know, you know. So they are 
they are around here okay so let's have a little look at uh, we've got you know etihad uh, ethereum the etihad eth is uh, uh, ethereum okay well what we can see is if i go on to the weekly chart here you know just zoom out we can see that you know that was just you know end of 2017 was just quite you know it's quite a manic phase for that uh, cryptocurrency market pushed up and then it's actually fallen itself uh, down and you know fallen itself quite uh, quite nastily and such so what we're looking at there is you know we can see that there was a little bit of let me put my cursor on you know even though we had a even though we had a strong fall we had a little bit of a, a pullback but then actually what we can see is that that sort of you know that downtrend has just um continued to um continued to move and really getting beneath that kind of 357 was kind of quite significant i thought we might have a, a bounce from that particular area but actually what well, price has gone down there now price is starting to sort of just have a little bit of a uh, price is starting to have a little bit of a, a, a breather there okay you know in the old days you'd have been expecting perhaps uh, a um something something as uh, simple as you know um uh, just you know, a, you know, a trend opportunity to sort of to, to buy into. But actually, what we're looking at here is, you know, I'm just looking at, you know, is this a case of this is where a, a simple trend uh, idea is starting to to build, uh, and we're going to be looking to sort of work with that until uh, until that particular position starts to break. And what I've just drawn in there is, you know, that's just a, a simple chart pattern, which is, you know, that's just a, you know, almost like symmetrical triangle, a pennant, and um, that is what will be on st uh, step five which we will get to over the next few weeks after we've gone through all of the uh, specific uh, um, market methods that we can uh, that we can actually look to to, to utilize in our uh, in our trading so uh, there you go ladies and gentlemen you know i said we've got a, we've got about uh, 45 minutes so uh, uh, you know i hope you found that useful uh, every week it's a case of it just building you know bit by bit you know so i'm uh, i appreciate you uh, joining me uh, now if you have any questions you can put them in the, the chat box it, it's a case of you know and as I said, next week we're going to be sort of starting to nudge our way towards more in terms of the uh, particular markets. All right, so I, you know, I'd hope you'd join me for that. If you're unable to, then by all means, you know, you'll be able to watch this session on uh, demand uh, later on in the uh, later on uh, in the day once it's once it's recorded and uh, uploaded. So you know, I wish you the very best of success in your uh, in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. You know, if there's anything I can do to help, ask, you can definitely answer ask me a question whilst I'm here on the line. Alternatively. As I said, don't uh, be afraid to get in touch with your uh, Admiral Markets account representative, and they, you'll find that they are very, very happy to be able to, uh, to sort of talk you through uh, your trading ideas and challenges and help you uh, develop yourselves. So uh, thank you very much. I uh, hope you have a great trading week, and I, I look forward to speaking to you next Monday where we will focus a good deal more on actual uh, uh, execution methods. Thank you very much.